All right, so now I have four to the power of x is equal to eight. So to solve this, I'm gonna first start by reading my, rewriting my four here as two to the power of two. So now I have two to the power of two to the power of x is equal to eight. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m times n. So two to the power of two to the power of x, that's gonna equal two to the power of two times x, which is simply two to the power of two x. So now I have two to the power of two x is equal to eight. Now eight, I can rewrite as two to the power of three. So now I have two to the power of two x is equal to two to the power of three. Now, if you guys already didn't know, if I have something in the form a to the power of m is equal to a to the power of n, this means that m is equal to n. So in this case, 2x, this is equal to 3. Now to solve this, all I have to do is simply divide both sides by 2. These two cancel out, and I'll be left with x is equal to 3 over 2. So this is one method of solving this problem. Now I actually have a second method of solving this problem. So again, I have four to the power of x equals eight. And now I'm actually gonna take, now, sorry, if I have something in the form a to the power of x is equal to b, then x here is actually equal to log base a of b. And I can actually go ahead and prove this as well. So if I start with four to the power of x is equal to eight, can go ahead and take the log on both sides. So I have log four to the power of x is equal to log eight. And now if I have something in the form log a to the power of b, I can actually move this exponent of e to the front, so this can equal b times log a. So I can move x to the front, so this would equal x times log four is equal to log eight. Now if I divide both sides by log four, I'll have x is equal to log eight over log four, which can be written as log base four of eight. So now that I have log base four of eight, I'm gonna actually instead use this, this form, so log eight over log four. And log eight, that's simply equal to two to the power of three, log four, this is equal to two to the power of two. So now, if I move three to the front, and if I move two to the front, I get 3 log 2 over 2 log 2. The log 2's cancel out, and I'll be left with x is equal to 3 over 2. So that's the second method. All right, so in this problem, I have x to the power of x to the power of 3 is equal to 36. So to solve this problem, I'm going to start by taking the power of 3 on both sides. So now I'm gonna have x to the power of x to the power of three to the power of three is equal to 36 to the power of three. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a, this is the same thing as a to the power of n to the power of n. So in this case, I have x to the power of x to the power of three to the power of three. And we can think of x to the power of three here as m and three as n. So this is the same thing as a to the power of n to the power of n. So I can change the place of these two. So now this is the same thing as x to the power of three to the power of x to the power of three. 
This is equal to still 36 to the power of 3. Now, 36 I can write as 6 to the power of 2. So now I have x to the power of 3. So the power of x to the power of 3 is equal to 6 to the power of 2 to the power of 3. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is also equal to a to the power of m times n. So 6 to the power of 2 to the power of 3, that's going to equal 6 to the power of 2 times 3, which is 6 to the power of 6. So now I have x to the power of 3 to the power of x to the power of 3 is equal to 6 to the power of 6. Now I'm going to let x to the power of 3 equal to the variable y. So now I have y to the power of y is equal to 6 to the power of 6. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of a is equal to b to the power of b, this means that a is equal to b. So in this case, y is equal to 6. So now I'm going to go ahead and clear up some space. So now I have y equals 6. However, remember that y is also equal to x to the power of 3. So now I have x to the power of 3 is equal to 6. So now to solve this, I'm going to take the power, or sorry, I'm going to take the cube root on both sides. So now I have the cube root of x to the power of 3 is equal to the cube root of 6. Now the cube root of x to the power of 3 is simply x, so I am left with x is equal to cube root of 6. So this is my answer. Alright, so in this problem, I have x to the power of 4 minus 16 is equal to 0. So to solve this, I'm going to first rewrite x to the power of 4 as x to the power of 2 times 2. So now I have x to the power of 2 times 2 minus 4 to the power of 2 is equal to 0. I just simply rewrite 16 as 4 to the power of 2. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m times n, this is the same thing as a to the power of m to the power of m. So x to the power of 2 times 2, that's going to equal x to the power of 2 to the power of 2. And I have this minus 4 to the power of 2 is equal to 0. Now, if I have something in the form a squared minus b squared, this is equal to a plus b times a minus b. So in this case, a is equal to x to the power of 2, and b is equal to 4. So I have x to the power of 2 plus 4 times x to the power of 2 minus 4 is equal to 0. So now let me clear this up so I can make some more space. So I have x to the power of 2 plus 4 times x to the power of 2 minus 4 is equal to 0. So now this gives me two equations. I have x to the power of 2 plus 4 is equal to 0, and I have x to the power of 2 minus 4 is equal to 0. So to solve x to the power of 2 plus 4 equals 0, I'm going to first start by subtracting 4 on both sides. So now I have x to the power of 2 is equal to negative 4. So now to solve this, I'm going to take the square root on both sides. So I have the square root of x squared is equal to the square root of negative 4. Now, the square root of negative 4, that can be written at, or sorry, first off, the square root of x squared is simply x. And the square root of negative 4, that can be written as the square root of 4 times the square root of negative 1. So now the square root of 4, that's simply equal to positive or negative 2. And the square root of negative 1 is actually equal to the Nagy number i. So I have x is equal to the positive or negative 2i. So these are two solutions. Now for x squared minus 4 equals 0, to solve this I'm going to simply add 4 on both sides. These two cancel out and I'll have x squared is equal to 4. Now if I take the square root on both sides, I have the square root of x squared is equal to the square root of 4. The square root of x squared is x and the square root of 4 is equal to positive or negative 2. So my four solutions are x is equal to 2, x is equal to negative 2, x is equal to 2i, and x is equal to negative 2i. So this is my four solutions.